stand real quick. We're going to read John chapter 15, verse number 1. John chapter 15, verse number 1. The Bible says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, sure do love you. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to get to be here tonight. Forgive me, Father, for my uh, tardiness, Lord, to be to the house of God. And thank you, Lord, for the patience of your people, Lord. Can't thank you enough for that. Ask Holy Spirit of God tonight that you'd speak to our hearts. Uh, Holy Spirit, would you use me, an unworthy vessel, to preach the word of God. And may the truth, uh, Lord, be received. And may the word of God be uh, preached. And would you give me the words that you'd have me to say, Holy Spirit. Would you help me to know exactly what needs to be said tonight. What exactly the hearts of the people need tonight that I can be a blessing. Lord, we can walk away, Lord, tonight being better Christians because, Lord, of your uh, of your truth. Lord, pray for the uh, dear brother, Lord, here tonight from uh, Dodge City. Lord, we pray for his, uh, Lord, brother that's in the hospital, Lord, now that's uh, getting better. But, Lord, uh, Lord, pray for his salvation, Lord. I just want to mention that to you, Lord, and pray that, Lord, you'd speak to his heart, and, uh, Lord, that he would be able to get saved soon. And, Lord, just pray that you'd take care, Lord, of that situation there. Bless all the needs that are in this room that, Lord, you know of, and, Lord, the many burdens, Lord, that are carried. Uh, Lord, the many prayer requests that are that are needed. And Lord, just pray that somehow, Lord, through the message tonight, that Lord, you would encourage and maybe even answer questions, Lord, that may be had of the of your people tonight. Just pray your will will be done. We sure do love you and thank you. Ask all these things in Jesus' name, Amen. You can have a seat. We read in John chapter 15. The Bible compares Christians to a vine uh, or to a branch. God says that. Uh, here Jesus is speaking. He says, I am the true vine. And I just got to thinking how that, how many times in the Bible that God compares Christians to plants. God compares uh, uh, people, even lost people, to plants. If you look Matthew chapter 13, verses 25 through 30, I'm going to read this for you. This is another portion of Scripture where uh, the Lord Jesus uses a parable and compares people uh, to, to a plant. Matthew chapter 13 the Bible says, verse 25, and it says, But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Here we see another portion of Scripture where God uses uh, an illustration how that uh, lost people are compared to the tares, and those that are saved are compared to wheat, and how that one day when Jesus comes back, and the Bible says that he is the reaper, one day he is going to come and, and reap us out of the earth, that those that are lost or compared to the tares, they'll be left behind. Left behind. They look like wheat, they act like wheat, they uh, maybe even confuse at the beginning, but when it comes down to it, when the reaping is done, that the tares and the wheat will be separated and the lost and the saved will be shown. Even sometimes in our churches there are, are, are wheat and tares and, uh, and it's a, co a comparison here of the lost and the saved. Psalms chapter 144, another portion of scripture I'll read to you, verse 12. God compares not just Christians, but here God can, uh, addresses young people specifically. Uh, in fact, it's young men. Psalms 144, verse number 12. Let me get there. There we go. Psalms 144, verse 12. The Bible says that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude 
of a palace. And uh, I told my teenagers the reason God says the, the daughters are like cornerstones is because uh, they're stubborn and they're like rocks. You know? And so and they, my wife looked at me. Sorry. Anyway, anyway so that's haleology there. So no, I'm kidding. But, uh, but God compares young people to plants. So all throughout the Bible that God uses uh, to compare us to plants. And so I did, a, I did a little bit of research and I thought it was very interesting. And I'd like to give you uh, a little bit about plant life that uh, I found and how it relates uh, how it relates even to Christians. It's, it's pretty funny. You study plants a little bit and just basic things, uh, but first, let me make a couple of statements. God compares you to plants because God wants you to bear fruit. God wants you to bear fruit. God has compares us to plants because God has made the plant life of this world to bear fruit, to reproduce itself, and God wants you to bear fruit. Number two, God wants your roots to be established. God compa compares us to a plant because God wants us to bear fruit. But in order to do that, we have to have roots. We have to be established. Remember this, in your life as a Christian, if you have no root, you'll have no fruit. If you have no root, you'll have no fruit. And your root is where you're planted. It should be planted, the Bible says, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're not planted your if you've not planted your life, if you're not building upon the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you'll not have any fruit in your life as a Christian. And then number three, God wants you to mature. These are just some statements. God wants you to mature. As a as a plant, a plant has to grow. It's planted, it becomes a seed. It has to begin to start the process of growing and maturing. And just as, as a plant does, God compares us to that because God wants us to to grow. Like in Psalms chapter 1, it says that uh, God compares us to a tree planted by the rivers of water. God wants us to be planted, but He wants us to mature so that we can bear much fruit. But I'd like to look at, real quick, just some study that I did on plants. And it was pretty interesting, and I'd like to give this to you. Number one, there are two types of plants in this world. You can boil it down to two types of plants. Here you go. You have vascular plants and non-vascular plants. What that means is there are plants that have water that goes through them and there are plants that don't. You have plants that have the ability to carry water in them and non-vascular plants, they don't have that. So you have two types of Christians in this world. You have those that are saved and those that are not saved. You have those that on the inside have the water of life. Like the woman at the well, Jesus said, Drink of this water and you will never thirst again. And then the Bible says that out of them shall flow rivers of living water. John chapter 4, verse 14. Show that to you. I thought it was neat. John chapter 4. It says, But whosoever drinketh of the, of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. You see, God wants to, in every Christian, God wants you to have a well of water that springs up in your life. And just as a plant, there are two, some that have water in them, some that don't. Well, there are two types of people. Two types of people, those that are saved, those that aren't. Two types of people in this room. Either you're saved or you're not. Either you have the water of life that flows through you or you don't. Now, from those two types of plants, I thought this was interesting, from those two types of plants, non-vascular plants, they do nothing else. That stops. They don't bear fruit. They have no other purpose. Plants that have water in them, the vascular plants, they have two other types after them. They have those that bear seed, and those that don't. I thought that was cool. You have two types of Christians. Those that bear fruit and those that don't. The Bible says that God, in John chapter 15, we read it, that God wants us to bear fruit. But you look there, it says that those that... Uh, look there, uh, I don't want to misquote the Bible. John chapter 15. It says, Every branch in me, in verse 2, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And so God's, and I love how the Lord does it. God made plants to where 
There are two types. They have those that bear seed and those that don't. There are two types of Christians. Either you are bearing fruit for God or you're not. If you're not bearing fruit, the Bible says, He taketh away, and every branch, uh, or every branch in me that beareth not fruit, He taketh away. But every branch that beareth fruit, He purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. You see, God's interested in our lives and bearing fruit. God is interested in your life making you a better Christian, constantly having you grow, constantly having you do more for God. God is not satisfied with a Christian that bears no fruit. God is not satisfied with you just being saved. God is not satisfied with you just being uh, saved from hell or having that fire insurance, so to speak. God wants you to bear fruit for Him. That's why it says every branch that bears fruit, He purgeth it. God puts you through a purging process. God puts you through trials. God puts you through testings. You know why? Because God wants you to bear more fruit for Him. Which are you tonight? Number one, are you saved? Are you the plant that has that living water that flows through you on the inside? Or do you just exist? That's what plants, that, that they don't, they're not vascular plants. They just exist. They do nothing else. They don't reproduce. They, don't, they just exist in this world. Plants that do uh, have that water that flows through them, they have the ability to reproduce. And God wants us to do that. God wants us to be, uh, God wants us to be reproducing Christians in our lives. As a Christian, you must be careful. The devil will try to put things in your way to stop you from bearing fruit. Did you know plants also have the same problem that we have? Sometimes we have things that get in our way. The devil tries to uh, put things, uh, 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 the stumbling blocks, so to say, in a, in a Christian's life. Well, plants have the same problem. They have diseases. And I thought it was funny. Let me give you some diseases that plants have. You ready? Here you go. Plants can develop what's called blight. It's where the leaves or the branches wither, they stop growing, and they die. Basically, what happens is a disease that causes the plant to not grow, and it dies. Well, in a Christian's life, if you get to a point where you stop growing, then you begin to die. If you go to a point in your life where you stop growing as a Christian, you get to a point where you no longer find the Word of God interesting. You no longer get something out of the Word of God. You no longer hear the preacher preach and it does something on the inside that makes you hit an old-fashioned altar. You stop growing as a Christian. Then the Bible says that you'll begin to die. Because a plant that doesn't grow and doesn't go forward is a plant that goes backward and dies. Also, Plants can get what's called a canker. It says they form, on, they form on a plant and cause everything to die. If you look it up, it, it almost looks like maybe like a canker sore that you would get. But they form on plants and it eats away at the plant and causes a plant to die. Well, can I tell you that the Bible says that sin is a canker. Sin in your life can develop. And if you leave it unchecked, and if you let sin develop in your life, it can cause you to die. It can cause you to not bear fruit. It can cause you to begin to wither away from God. Lots of Christians this happens to where they get this canker of sin that develops in their life. They begin to allow sin to conquer. They begin to allow the thoughts to, pro, to rule and to dominate in their life and they don't let God have His way and they begin to die. You never see Him again. You never see Him in church. You never see Him in the house of God. They never hand out a gospel tract. They never go soul winning again. You know why? They've let sin be a canker and it causes them to die. Don't let sin rule Young people, don't allow the fornication to develop. Don't allow the adultery to develop as an adult. 
Don't allow the, the sins of this world to catch you. And if it does develop, then check that. Take care of it. Get it taken care of. Don't allow it to cause you to die as a Christian. Too many young people, too many adults, too many Christians have allowed sin to be that canker that causes them to never do anything for God again. God wants to use you. God needs a plant to grow and to be a, a lighthouse and to bear fruit and cause people to come to, to know Jesus as their Savior. But you've let sin be that canker that's developed in your life that's caused you to become fruitless for God. And God says He has to take those plants that don't bear fruit and He has to take them away. How many times have, we, have I watched God remove people from church? They didn't remove themselves. I've watched God had to remove people because they've become, an, they've become an enmity with God. They've become a canker to themselves and to their local church. Don't let that sin develop. Another disease plants get is they rot. It decays at the roots and it goes up the stem it also does uh, that in, in, in wood. Wood rots when it just sits for a while. Uh, trees, they, after they, uh, if they don't have a root system and they just sit, they begin to rot. You ever see rotted wood? Have you ever tried to go and maybe uh, pick up a piece of wood that's rotted? It stinks and it's nasty to handle because it's just sat. You know, in your life as a Christian, if you just sit, if you do nothing for God, you just sit day after day, week after week. If you're not busy, you'll begin to just rot. You begin to just rot in your Christian life. You begin to stink. People walk around and you begin to have that attitude and they, what's wrong with them? You know, you begin to not have a smile anymore because there's something about doing something for God, staying busy for God that puts a smile on your face. There's something about going soul winning and telling somebody about Jesus that brings joy. Look at verse uh, number 7. You don't believe me? Let me give you the Bible on it. Is it verse 7? Uh, I'm trying to find it. Uh, let me start in verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, my words abide in you. You shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein, my, herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Uh, oh, very, there you are. Verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. There is joy that comes from bearing fruit. There is joy that go comes to a Christian that bears fruit for God. That's why you can always tell when there's no joy in a Christian, they're usually not bearing any fruit. Because there's joy that God gives you. If you don't have any joy tonight, let me give you a good remedy. Grab you a gospel tract and go tell somebody about Jesus. Let me give you a good remedy. Get in the Bible and allow the Holy Spirit to bear fruit in your life. Don't just sit. Don't just become stagnant. Don't just be the puddle of water that sits there and just does nothing. The, the, as, a, as the old illustration of a pond that doesn't have any outsource, it just constantly receives and receives and sits. It becomes, it, it stinks and nothing can grow because it rots. You've got to have a way out that gives and allows the Lord and the Holy Spirit to flow through. Another disease is rust. It's a fungal disease that needs two hosts to complete a cycle. Be careful who you hang around. Be careful as a Christian who you allow to be an influence. Because who you allow to be an influence, they may have a disease. They may have something that's not good for you. And it'll rub off on you and cause you to die as a Christian. To to not produce fruit as a Christian. How many young people have I seen that develop friends? 
outside of the house of God. Let, young people, let me give you the greatest advice you can ever have. Do not develop friends outside of the house of God. Now, I'm not saying don't be friendly. I work at UPS, and I am friendly with those men that are there. And you can ask them. They, I had to turn in my, uh, my two weeks just last week because I'm going to be able to get a different job. And they, they hated to see me go because I'm friendly to them. But we don't go to each other's houses because they're not Christians. They don't love God. They use God's name in vain. They have different goals. They have a different agenda. And I know that if I allow them to be an influence on me, that that's going to cause me to maybe not produce fruit as a Christian as I should. You think that it'll be okay. You think, well, I'll be okay. I can take care of it. That's what everybody else thought. You read in the Bible how many times the, the, these uh, the examples that are given to us of people that thought that they could take on sin. Lot thought, he, Lot thought he could live in Sodom and Gomorrah and be okay. And God says it vexed his righteous soul day to day. He even lost his family. Be careful who you allow to be associated with. Because remember this, it may not affect you as bad, but it could affect your family. Maybe adult, it doesn't drag you out of church, but it'll drag your kids. Maybe it doesn't cause you to not have a love for the Lord, or maybe it doesn't cause you to not have a love for the Lord as, you, as bad, but it'll take your kids where they'll hate God. Billy Sunday said this. He was a great evangelist, but he let his two boys be babysat while he went out of town with his wife by an atheist uh, babysitter. And, at, and uh, somebody asked him, they said, Brother Sunday, what do you regret? And he said, my only regret is that both my boys will spend eternity in hell. Be careful who you allow to influence you and your family. And the last thing, that the last disease a plant can get is called wilts. It's where a plant does not have enough water to survive. And you see where plants begin to wilt. You ever seen that? Yeah, I tried to grow some roses at my house. And uh, I planted four rose bushes. Two are looking good. The other two, uh, let's just say they... Uh, they went on to rose heaven. And you know why I figured out? Roses need a lot of water. <laughs> I didn't think they need that much water. I thought, you know, a little bit every day, I'd be doing good. You know, how hard is it to grow flowers? You know, I mean, come on. You know, I'm a man. We can grow anything, you know. Just put it in the ground, and God will do the rest. <laughs> no, I got to water it, I figured out. But it takes a lot of water. Did you know that you, as a Christian, if you don't have enough water of the Word of God that in your life you will begin to wilt as a Christian. The Bible says that the water or the, uh, that the Word of God is compared to water in your life. If you don't have enough of the Word of God in your life, you'll begin to wilt. It's not that you won't produce fruit, but your fruit won't be as much. You'll produce some but not, not as much as you've done before. You'll have some saved, but maybe not as many as you've had. You'll get something out of your Bible reading, but it won't be the same. Your prayer life will be okay, but it won't be the same. Your church life, where when you sat and you heard the Word of God, it'll encourage you, but you won't be as excited as you once were. You'll begin to wilt. Your leaves will begin to droop. Your plant won't be as strong. And sure, you'll be there, but eventually you'll fall over. And everybody standing around will go, what happened? As you know in your life, you watched a slow decline as you wilted. I mean, the only answer is the Word of God. The only answer is to read more Bible. The only answer is is to get in God's Word, is to get closer to the Lord and to walk with God every day, to not allow your life to become spiritually dry.
Have you come? To, have you ever been there? If not, you might be one day. The answer is the Word of God. John chapter 15, we go back. God says, I am the true vine. Jesus is the true vine. Amen. That means we need to get connected to Jesus. The father is the husbandman. The father is the one that looks at the vines, checks them out, makes sure they're producing. And we're the branches. How good is your branch? Are you bearing fruit? What fruit have you had towards God? Maybe you need to bear more fruit. God says that's what he's after. But fruit only comes, as you look in verse 4, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Fruit cannot come from the branch. Fruit comes from the root. It grows on the branch. It's allowed to go through the branch. But fruit is a result of a good root system. You're a branch. But if you don't have a good root, if you're not established, abiding in Christ, you can't have fruit. It's impossible. There's nothing you can do to produce fruit of yourself. You have to abide in Christ. Last thing in my study here of plants. God wants you to grow, not die. A plant can die not just because of diseases, but a plant can, di can die be just because of negligence. Number one, the biggest thing a, w a plant needs is water. The biggest thing you need in your life is the Word of God. Number two, a bi the, bi uh, the next thing is a plant needs oxygen, clean air. Amen. It needs to be able to breathe. Then it needs soil. Healthy, that provides stable roots, proper growth. You've got to have good soil that you plant it in. Amen. You've got to have the soil of God. You can't just uh, put yourself in... Uh, I tried to illustrate the soil as... Uh, you know, uh, soil is talking about what you involve your life in, what you put your roots into. You know, sometimes people put their roots into money. Sometimes people put their roots into possessions. And the soil here is talking about what you establish your life in. And number four, a plant needs light. Light gives plants energy to produce food. Too little light will make plants weak. Amen. Well, Jesus is the light. Don't have enough of the light, you won't be able to produce as much fruit. The closer you are to Jesus, the more fruit you'll produce. Plants also have to have the right temperature. I'll try to think of something there. I, my first thought was attitude. <laughs> but I think more what I would say there is the temperature is watch what you allow yourself to be in involved in. Amen. Plants also need space and plants need time. I won't go through everything I had there just because I know uh, for, for sake of time, but space and, and talking there about uh, you need, you need uh, uh, space from others. Sometimes you need to get away from other people and just spend time with God. If you're too close to people, if you're too close to other plants and you're not Give yourself a little bit of room and spend time with the Lord. And then the last there, number seven, is plants need time. They need time to grow. Don't expect yourself to be a super Christian overnight. Amen. You need time to grow. Amen. Allow yourself time. The biggest thing that sometimes can be bad is we get impatient with ourselves. God at work. Allow God to, to work in you and work through you and to grow you. But are you growing? Have you given yourself all the things that you need to grow? Are you dying spiritually? 
Are you a plant that withers? Well, have you given yourself the things you need? If you give yourself the Word of God, if you water that plant, you'll grow. It's a promise. But if you neglect these things, you'll wither and die. Look there. Verse number 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Again, the stressing the importance of Jesus Christ. Without Jesus, we can't do anything. Without Jesus, you can't bear fruit. Without Jesus, you can't uh, bring forth fruit, fruit for the master's service. But God says, and I like it there, it says, if it, He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. God's not just satisfied, satisfied with a little fruit. God wants much fruit. Amen? Maybe you've done a little bit for God. Well, desire to do more because God wants to do more. Maybe you've done some small things for God. Maybe you saw one saved last year. Then desire to see two saved this year. Maybe you, you read your Bible halfway through last year. Then read your Bible all the way through next, this year. You know, allow God to bring forth much fruit. God wants to do that. God wants to bring more people to Christ. God wants you to grow ten times more. Verse 6, if a, van, if, a, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. If you make a choice to not abide in Christ, if you make the choice that you don't need God, then God says you're cast forth, you're withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. It's not talking about that God's going to send you to hell. Sometimes people read this and they think, well, God's going to cast those that don't work into the fire and be burned. God's not talking about that. God is saying when you become so unproductive that God has to get rid of you altogether. God has to put you aside. There comes a point where God stops working in a Christian's life. The Bible says, My spirit will not always strive with man. There comes a point where you can quench the Holy Spirit so much that God says that maybe you're more used to Him in heaven. Now, I, it doesn't happen often, but I know my pastor, used, uh, Dr. Miller, used to tell me that there, he knew some Christians gone so far said no to the Holy Spirit so many times. And as the book of Proverbs says, they hardened their neck. They were stiff-necked towards God. And God had to bring punishment. The fire represents punishment in a Christian's life. The fire represents the, the punishment, the purging that God has to bring to those that don't bear fruit. One day the Lord's going to cast your works, the Bible says, into the fire. And your works will be burned. It's also a representation of eternity. When God takes everything that you've done in this life, and it will burn. And it will either remain, or it will be gone. Verse 7, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. If you're a plant that produces fruit, if you're a plant that abides in Christ, then you're also a plant that can have answered prayer. If you're a plant that the Word of God will abide in you, and God says you can ask what you will, and God will do it. Why would God do that? Why would God want you to bear fruit? Why would God want to answer your prayer? Why would God want you to ask what you will and it can be done unto you? Well, the answer is in verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. God wants you to glorify Him. God wants you to bring... the And, and Jesus wants you to bring glory to His Father. He says, this is where my Father is glorified. 
and that you bear fruit. This is where the rubber meets the road. When God looks down and is able to say, well done, is when we bear much fruit. Jesus said in your life, He wants you to be a, a, a producing Christian, but He wants you to please His Father, and He wants you to do it through bearing fruit. So shall you be my disciples. And then verse 9, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Notice after everything, after it's all said and done, God still loves you. Maybe you're not bearing the fruit that you thought you should. Maybe you're not bearing as much fruit. Maybe you're not bearing fruit at all. But as the Father hath loved me, Jesus said, so have I loved you. Everything Jesus does for us is a result of his love. If Jesus purges you, he does it in love to, make you, to bring forth more fruit. If Jesus has to take you and cast you aside to let you wither, he still does it in love. If you're not a fruit-bearing Christian at all, and you've begun to wilt, then the hardest thing that God says he's ever done is had to cut you off. Again, not that you lose salvation. We understand that that's a doctrine in the Bible. You can never lose salvation. But God is saying the lack of productivity. You're not bringing forth fruit. So God has to punish. God has to bring forth judgment in our lives. But He does it in love. Continue ye in my love. And then verse 10, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. God wants to glorify. Jesus wants to glorify his Father. Jesus wants God to look down and be pleased with our lives. And he loves us, and he wants to do it in love. And then last, he wants to give you joy beyond measure. He wants your joy to be full. But the only way for your joy to be full, like we said, is in bearing fruit that would please God. Are you bearing fruit that would please God today? If not, your joy won't be full. Joy comes in the life of a son when he pleases his father. When he does something that he knows his dad will be proud of. Well, joy comes in a Christian's life when you've pleased your father. When God can look at you one day in eternity and said, well done. When you know that God can look down at you right now, and maybe you've not bear the fruit that you'd like, but you know that God would be pleased with the fruit that you have. The Bible says that God will give you joy, and joy that will remain. Not the joy of the world, that will leave. You go ahead and try to please the world, and you won't have joy. You go ahead and live your life for the devil, and you won't have joy. You go ahead and live your life and, and put your roots in something other than Jesus, and you'll have no joy. But you put your life and abide in Christ and bear fruit for God, and the Bible says your joy will remain. And it'll be full. I love that thought. Your joy will remain. It'll stay there. It doesn't leave. And it'll be full. God doesn't fill you up halfway. God's not like your Keurig coffee pot. You ever push that button, you want a full cup of coffee, and it go, only goes like three-fourths of the way there? You're like, hey. <laughs> you hit the big one, and it goes too far. Hit the middle one, and it doesn't go up enough, you know. No, God wants you to get a full cup. I don't know why I said that. I was thinking about coffee is why. God wants you to have a full cup. He wants you to be pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. Do you have joy today? Well, bear some fruit. Amen. Honor God.
Where are you planted? I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Are you abiding in Christ? Verse 4, lastly, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for the wonderful day that you've given to us, Father.